And new analysis out today reveals the shocking number of staff who are looking to leave the NHS. The figures show that almost half of NHS workers have looked for jobs outside of the service and 29% have actively inquired about non-NHS work. Hardly surprising, last year the health service launched its first long-term workforce plan, whatever that means, with a view to retaining current staff and boosting numbers. But stress... Workload and staff shortages the top reasons why workers say they are going to leave the NHS. Well, joining us now is the former NHS Trust Chair, Roy Lilly. Roy, good morning. Uh, morning do, Roy. do these new figures surprise you? No, they, they don't. I mean, we know, don't we? Yeah, and we see it in the on the telly and the papers. You know, the NHS is chock a block and everybody's working flat out. What is interesting, I think, about this survey, the standout thing for me is that it's a four year longitudinal survey. So they looked at 1500 people over four years and they've they've kind of tracked their attitude. And although the, you know, the uh, the fact that somebody's looked at a job for, uh, outside the NHS isn't that significant. I mean, I think we all kind of do that. It does very much chime with my own experience of talking to people on the front line um, and there's two things really that I think are important when we're talking about nurses, at least. Firstly, is that nurses can retire at 55 and nursing is becoming increasingly physical and, and a huge sort of physical effort. And a lot of nurses are saying, you know what, Roy, I've had enough. I'm going to retire when I can. So we're seeing early retirements. And also we're seeing a lot of youngsters now who once went into nursing because they sort of wanted a, a job for life. It was a career. Now they're saying, you know what, I want a job and a life. And a lot of them are leaving the NHS, which is which carries a big pension penalty for them. And they're working for agencies and coming back and working in the NHS at, at times and on shifts that suit them and their families. So the, I think those those two big demographic shifts are underlined in this study. And, and it's really quite worrying, I think. Roy, good to have you on, my friend. Um, th this is the bit that I... We sit and we talk about the NHS. We talk about conditions, we talk about money. We talk about it's busier than ever, but should you know, more people are going private. We talk about the mistakes that are made, et cetera, et cetera. How do you retain staff? I mean, I speak to striking junior doctors and nurses who are out on strike saying the working conditions are awful, the money's awful, it's vocational, we're not treated properly. You've got the other side of the coin that say, there's 200 billion quid or whatever. What, what is, you ran a trust, what is it? Why are staff so dissatisfied? Why is customer service so appalling? And, and, and is it, and, and I don't mean to be cynical, that it's just not fit for bleeding purpose anymore and we need to stop looking at it on some pedestal and accept that it isn't what it was and change it? Well, it, I mean, it certainly isn't what it was, that's true. And I think, I think that there's a combination of factors. I mean, certainly um, COVID knackered everybody and the NHS never got a chance to catch its breath um, because it was now under huge pressure for waiting lists. So I think that's it. I was talking to Trust Chief Executive yesterday and he was saying to me his cancer referrals, cancer referrals, which come with a timeline attached to them, are up by 50% a day. I was talking to some GPs recently. They're doing 1.3 million a, a, um, appointments a day. I mean, I've never seen the NHS so busy. That all makes work in the hospitals that much more that difficult. You've got an older population on more people, Roy. So if you were, my yeah. question is very simple. If you were back in charge of an NHS trust and your staff all wanted to leave, what would you do? Make better use of the if money? Would you be demanding more money? Would you be making them work for less? What? What would you do? I, I think it, a lot of it, I, I would focus on the nursing. 70% um, of nurses are female and a lot of them have caring duties as well. So I do what's called soft rotoring. So I'd, I'd, I would enable much more flexibility in rotoring. I'd make sure that my hospital had a creche. I'd make sure that my car parking was discounted for staff. I'd make sure that night duty staff didn't have to pay for overnight car parking. I'd make sure that I, my canteen was open. So I had hot meals 24 seven. There's a lot of very basic, simple things that you can do to make people's working day easier. You can't, you can't reduce the demand. The demand is whatever the demand is. But what you can say to your staff, and you can never really say it often enough, is look, we absolutely value the fact that you're working here. We want to make your life as easy as we can. What can we do? So a lot of it is, is soft HR stuff that makes things easier 
for you know changing facilities showering facilities all of that kind of thing you can you can do that to make the life easier and a lot of it is about rostering at the moment nurses work predominantly they do three days back to back 12 hours now that's that's been a decision that was made a long time ago some of the hospitals now are refer are reverting back to eight hour shifts uh, on a on a, a two weekly rotor uh, to make it easier for people to transition from day into night and so on. So you've got to understand that that these are family people. They are family, just like you and I. We have family responsibilities. We want to do things with our families. We've got to accommodate that. Some hospitals have actually started holiday clubs for kids uh, during the summer holidays, which Roy, are really these, very these important. These seem like really very simple yet really effective, yes, potentially yes, very, very effective yes. changes. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I could talk to you about this all Good man, morning. Roy, I wish you. you were in charge. Thank you so much. Yeah, why, don't we, why don't we put him in charge of the health service? I would, know. Would you want, just one final question I'll get, would you, would you want more money or would you make better use of it? Make better use of it.